Hey, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to give you some info on uh, rounding of Mercer Island last year. Sergey and I did this and uh, learned a lot, so I wanted to share with you the details. So last October, Sergey and I did this, and uh, it was the first time I've done it on a wing foil and learned a lot. Um, one thing I want to uh, mention, though, is making sure you got the proper safety gear. Uh, which is a phone and a bag, an emergency contact, um, some ditch points along the way like parks that you know of, um, having maybe some food, uh, a life preserver, uh, PFD, whatever, um, any other emergency supplies you think of that would be necessary that to keep you safe uh, because ultimately you're on your own for this. Um, um, so let me dig into my tracks and we can talk about them or I'll mention what, uh, what my thoughts are. And if uh, you want to, in the comments, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. So when I started here, I was just, uh, testing my gear, making sure it looked good, felt good. Um, as I entered the center channel here, uh, I was up on foil, um, because there was west in the wind, um, which I didn't take into account, which we'll talk about later, uh, there was a wind shadow here. Um, and inevitably, you're going to run into a wind shadow somewhere along here. Um, but uh, I was up on foil for quite a bit of it. Uh, eventually, I dropped off foil for here and schlogged a bit um, until the wind picked up again. But I'd probably recommend staying closer to the Bellevue side if possible. You may be able to pump through this or at least get better wind and stay up on foil. Um, once you get out in this section here, the wind picks back up again. Uh, staying out further, uh, for, uh, far enough that the wind is clean is essential. You don't want to get too close to the land mass because the wind will drop off. Um, but as you're doing this rounding on the north side, uh, you've probably already decided which side of the channel you're going to go through here. Um, if there's any west to the wind, stay away from the west side because there will be a big wind shadow. If there's any east in the wind, stay away from the east side. Um, last year when I did this, I already made the decision to do the west side. I didn't take into account the west and the wind. And so as I'm doing this rounding about here, um, I run into a big wind shadow here. I tried to get back up on foil, uh, swam a little bit there. Uh, I think I got back up on foil here. And then from here to the underpass, I swam, which was probably a good 20 or 30 minutes. Um, fortunately, there's a nice park here. Uh, basically, I took a break for like 20 minutes under the bridge. Um, very light wind under the bridge because of the wind shadow. Um, so I rested, um, talked to a couple people that actually came through. Um, and then I did two uh, launch attempts, I believe. Uh, one, I got washed back through. Uh, the water's pretty clean here, so it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, the most successful was walking up as far as I could and then launching when a uh, gust of wind came. Uh, but you do want to avoid completely the closed section of the bridge, which is like there to there, uh, and give it plenty of room out like to there. Um, you'll get a lot of uh, bounce back waves and backwash and it's really messy conditions inside there. And if you get stuck, you may not get back up on foil here. Uh, one year, somebody got in a bad situation. They ended up having to climb up the ladder and get rescued. And I'm not sure what happened to their gear, but it probably wasn't pretty. Um, so uh, do your tacks and jibes in the open section, ideally, until you get further enough away from the bridge that uh, the water cleans up. Here you'll see, as I started my course, uh, I think what I, from what I recall, uh, it was getting pretty choppy right in this section. So I did one jibe, 
uh, and get out a little further and there was a little cleaner water. Um, yeah, I'd like to see a little bit better lines here, but uh, it's something I'd probably work on. Here I'd probably make bigger jibes uh, or tacks and uh, do less of them. Um, along the west side of Seward Park, wind shadow along here. So that's about where the wind started dying. Uh, here I probably could have uh, extended it a little further and did less of them. Uh, this section here, I took a break. Um, yeah, and then up a little further here, um, I think I underestimated my course at this point here. I thought I could make the rounding and it became apparent pretty quick that I wasn't going to make the tip. So I had to do one more jibe. Uh, the wind gets pretty fluky as you get towards that southern end. Uh, the wind starts bouncing off, um, creates wind shadows, uh, changes of the wind and such. So I'd give that plenty of room around that southern tip. Um, underestimate the angle you're going to need and you'll be fine there. And then uh, once you get around the southern tip, it's a uh, sweet ride, downwind, uh, nice little bumps all along here. Uh, enjoy that portion. And uh, yeah, that's my notes. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave them in the section somewhere around here. All right. See ya.